Welcome back to last part of lecture 6 and in this part we will do some hands on with R and uh, let me just you know try to show, share my desktop. Uh, so this is uh, and this is the code that I already have shared with you in the lecture material part that we are using Chennai 1990 uh, we have done some work with the data this data set uh, and in this data set what we have done is we have done we tried to fit simple uh, sine cosine kind of uh, I mean uh, some regression model with sine cosine uh, Fourier term or engineered term. So let us start with this. We have this data set. So let me just first clean the environment that we need to. So first, so this is the data set that we have. You have seen this before last week. Now the structure of the data set is everything is numeric but time was taken as a uh, character so we convert it into time and now you have this as a date format then now we plot this now n is the data set we have 11,894 data points. Let me increase the font size a bit. Go to Tools, go to Global Options, then Appearance, um, Editor, maybe zoom 200% and apply and OK. Right? And then what we are doing, we are creating another data set, another column. So, there, there is a time, t, average temperature, minimum temperature, maximum temperature, and precipitation. Right and now, I am creating a new column omega. Okay, now after creating column, you can see that what we have done i have subtract the average time just location i just shift the location and then i split the data into train and test so any data before 31st december 2015 i have used it as uh, train data and if you just put a tail so you can see the last value is uh, of the train data is 31st December 2015 and any data before after 31st December 2015 is test data so I am just plotting the first few rows so from 1st January 2016 we are going to use it as test data so then we fit first model Okay, and this is the first model that we fitted. You can see with one that we did last week, this model we fitted last week. Then we created, took the fitted model, fitted values, and plot the fitted model values through the average temperature then we fit the second model okay and what we are seeing that what we are seeing that second model with sign 2 omega t plus cos 2 omega t they are all significant and Again, we just fitted the model, fit the model. 
then so this is sort of a let me just zoom out so this is you can so every year we have some kind of sign cosine behavior this is kind of expected but at the same time it is kind of going up we can see there is an increasing trend model is picking up a increasing trend and we just here we just plotted the first 10 years from 1990 to 2000 and so here is the first 10 years average expected behavior and then if we just we have a 95 percent confidence band as well okay now and this is the from 2000 to 2010 okay now we are going to add why we are only going to stop at uh, 2 omega and cos 2 omega we can in add as many cases as we want say maybe up to 7 omega or 8 omega okay. 4 4 I'm adding as many engineered features as possible and I'm not worried about overfitting much because I have too many data, almost 11,000 data points I have, so I'm not worried, okay. So let me just try 7 Fourier terms. Let us see. And we can see that there are some Fourier terms like cos 5 omega is not significant. Actually, in fact, after 3 omega onwards, uh, the significance has dropped to an extent. Though sin 6 omega does have an effect. But cos 6 omega 7 omega, they don't have an effect. We can even try a few more if we want, you know, never know. If in case there are some higher um, things. So, this is yeah so yeah from 5 6 7 8 may have but 9 8 9 they don't have much effect so what we will do we will is we don't want to keep the keep growing the model size okay and if we do that we will see that there might be uh, eventually overfitting is happening so what we will do we will, we will keep this model and at the same time, we will fit another model for model 4, model 4 and we will apply stepwise uh, for variable selection on the model 3. So, so if we just, you see, it just fitted these models. So these models were fitted. Okay. So yeah, here from here. So this is the model that was fitted with this AIC, and then this is the model that was fitted, and eventually it settled down to a model. And let's see what was that. So I can just copy and paste it here and take some summary for 
So it has dropped the cost terms and kept only the sign terms that has effect in the model, though it is it did not throw away the cost nine. So we can actually that means we can add few more terms. And let me try this. And so yeah, looks like. And then let me just run this step by step forward selection. See, it just run. And let me just run it. So now it has completely dropped the eleventh. Uh, Fourier term and it, it stopped at 10th Fourier term. So we can just stop at here. So we can just and now what we will do, we will do the prediction. So first we will do prediction and we will calculate the out of the sample accuracy. So in the test we are creating prediction and here is the out of the sample accuracy. And then we will do so what was the RMAC? So 1.50 for first model. Then if we do prediction for the second model and RMAC would be 1.37. Now if we do the same thing for the third model, let us done that. And the RMAC 3 is 1.38. Now you can see that RMAC has gone up because we have added too many models. So there we can see too many Fourier term, too many engineer term. And as a result, you can see that there are some overfitting tendencies being picked up. And then we have the stepwise selected. Um, for selected model. So from there, if we calculate the RMC out of the sample RMC is 1.379. So this is where it is stopping. So either we can go for fourth model or we can go for because end of the day, the simpler 1.378, the simpler say second model with two sine cosine Fourier terms form has a lower RMAC than a bigger more complex model even if after doing a stepwise selection. So if I have to choose out of these three I will go for the second model. So if I have to let me just you know uh, let me just so clearly uh, if I just say RMAC is this and which dot mean of RMAC clearly the second one is the RMAC M2 the second model has the maximum uh, minimum RMAC so even if after doing the stepwise selection significant very uh, dimension reduction the model is still complex and doing some bit of uh, overfitting perhaps so uh, we can do somebody of more two so we can look into the parsimonious model this is our parsimonious model perhaps we just 
be happy with this. And we just take this line and run once more. And with this, we run this. sigma of this correct sigma for this model we have to just go up So now if we just look into this, so this is our final uh, out of the sample performance from 2016 to 2022. Now here is one uh, self-assessed assignment for you guys. Use this model and can you find what would be the temperature of Chennai, average expected temperature of Chennai in January in year 2033, that is 10 years from today in January, say 30th January, what would be the expected temperature? Can you, uh, with this kind of confidence interval, can you uh, figure that out? And if what is the expected temperature in, in the 30th January on 2023 and how much increase you are observing. Can you do this self-assessed exercise and let me know uh, that what is your findings. That will be really fun exercise and I think that will be, we all want to know that the answer to that question. Thank you very much. See you in the next lecture. Bye.